question is from jmain7. A college professor told us that the eccentric part of the lift is the only important part of the lift because it tears the muscle. If someone only repeated the eccentric part of the lift, would they see major gains or is it a myth? Yeah, what it's kind just of prof- one variable. Yeah, what kind of a professor would say that yeah, it's the it's only important the only part? One that, yeah. it, it, it is true that the lower lame workout. Yeah, so... <laughs> 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 Done. Everybody's yeah. like lifting like grandpas. Yeah. So if so for those lifting who don't know what that that means. So there's 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 two there's three parts of a, of a lift. There's the concentric. That's the lifting. So if you think if you imagine me doing a curl, yeah. the concentric is me curling the weight up. Then there's the isometric, was which is where you hold it, and then eccentric is when you lower the weight. So as you're lowering a weight, the muscle is still contracting, but it's doing so in a way that allows you're it to. You're resisting more gravitational forces, typically. Yeah, it's 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 doing it in a way where it's allowing the muscle to to lengthen while contracting. That part of the lift is the most responsible for muscle growth, and this has been shown in studies. But used by itself, it quickly leads to plateau. And it quickly leads to overtraining because it is a very damaging part of the lift. Now, the concentric part of the lift also tells the body to build muscle. And it also is what's definitely the one that contributes most to athletic performance. Mm-hmm. Now, at Olympic lifters, okay, um, they do a lot of concentric only lifting with barely any eccentric. Yeah. Now, squats, I would say they do lots of, con- you know, con- they'll do some eccentric, although they lower the weight a lot faster than most lifters. <laughs> Olympic lifters are buffed as hell too, though. Mm-hmm. Now, they're not as big as bodybuilders or power lifters, but there's your evidence right there that the concentric part builds muscle as well. Um, now, there's some benefits to to the part of the lift that doesn't cause lots of damage. You can do a lot of it. So I can increase the volume quite a bit if I'm doing concentric only. Eccentric, there's only so much. You'll, I don't know if you guys have you guys ever experienced uh, experimented with like forced negatives and yeah, oh, just yeah. doing all night na- for how long though? I mean, I did it for a couple of weeks and that was plenty. For yeah, me. you're 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 done. Your yeah. your your uh, recovery's done. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna defend the professor a little bit just because sometimes this is uh, he may have been giving a really good message in my opinion and then they just got misconstrued or misunderstood. Uh, and that's because I've done many talks uh, with trainers where I'm stressing the eccentric part of the exercise because nobody else is. Nobody else is, yeah. and nobody in the gym is. If you were, if we were to walk in your average gym right now and look at 90% of the people lifting weights on the floor, a majority of those people are not maximizing the benefits that you get from the eccentric movement right. portion of the exercise. Uh, and that is slowing the negative down. So the negative or the resisting the weight, we tend to just let gravity do it and we just let it drop or fall and then we focus on the concentric part. So in in defense of him, it it is just as important. So it's not more important than the concentric part of the exercise. It's just as important. Well, and to add on to that, like in sports terms, so to decelerate is a massive part of preventing injuries in like any athletic pursuit. So uh, that that second portion of now I have to slow everything down at once rapidly uh, is usually where people get hurt. And so to be able to kind of break that down and focus on that and strengthen that process is valuable, but it's one part. So you have to consider all the parts. And so I just Again, I, I I caution myself to just like highlight that specifically as like the answer. Uh, no, it's, it's all of it. It's definitely not the answer. It's probably the most neglected part, though. Sure. Um, of an exercise uh, that I think a majority of people could learn from that or take this advice and go apply it to their training. I mean, and I've said this on the show before. I mean, if you've never done this before, I I dare you to have a workout where you just change your tempo a four two two where it's you know, four seconds on the negative, two in the isometric hold position, and then two on the concentric or the or the positive part of the exercise. Just try messing with that tempo. Don't change your workout. Do the same exercises you were planning on doing today, but just do that in itself and note watch how different you feel. Oh, totally. You're probably going to be a lot weaker. Be okay with that. But and you're probably going to get really sore because you're not used to that tempo. And that just highlights the benefits of really putting some more emphasis on the eccentric part of the lift that most people just aren't doing. Yeah, no, you make a good point. I think uh, people don't focus on the muscle they're working when they lower a weight. They don't focus on the mm-hmm. tempo. It's like, 
Am I, if I'm lo- if, when I'm pressing in a bench press, I'll tend to focus on the pecs. But when you lower, do you still focus on the pecs? Or are you just trying to lower the weight? Right. Uh, focus on the muscle you're working as you lower uh, the bar, the dumbbell. Um, that's a great, that's an absolutely great. It helps build tip. a lot of control too, mm-hmm. which is important. 